the, the schedule right now is that I do uh, 10 to 12 to, to 15 minute you know, PowerPoint karaoke from a few slides I prepared. And then we, and, and it's supposed to be some sort of a bridge between the art related stuff we were discussing and listening about in these last few hours and days, and, and, and between what Annie has to say about her life and uh, other circumstances. Okay, so that's my job. And then we pass on to Annie, who's going to present uh, what, 30 minute or 40 minute something. We're not going to measure really. And then we're going to move on to some sort of a dialogue where we're going to be throwing these microphones in to the audience and hoping we have questions to ask. So this is a format, okay? And this is the only housekeeping thing I have, no sponsors to thank, and so on. <laughs> so let's move on to these uh, few slides I got. I uh, just saw it briefly there. Cool. Uh, it's just for me, because I'm a senior citizen, I'm senile, and I cannot keep my thoughts in order, and I need this in a mental crutch uh, to, to move on. There's only three things I would like to say a couple words about. They're simple, uh, and they're nice and sweet. Uh, so, the trick here is that, uh, obviously, uh, I just want to put some equation marks between things. Uh, we've been listening, uh, uh, especially to John today, and also uh, people yesterday, the mail art stuff is similar, where we are noticing that uh, the only examples that we're quoting all the time are, all, are the examples from the other art, art movements. I think it's only fair, simply because it is the elementary intention, the f very fundamental intention of any other God movement is disruption in, in itself, and this was my attempt to connect uh, these few slides with the topic of the whole seminar. Then, one other erotic bit here is that, uh, like the exhibition at Schutz, also with this seminar, uh, we, uh, I'm sure that for a majority of younger people in the audience, uh, a big portion of what you're hearing here is a complete uh, world's first for you. Uh, a lot of this uh, talk about, especially about Avangard, achievements uh, in these last 20 or 35 years is, is what we would call a hidden or a parallel history of art. I actually happen to believe that it is the only right way to learn about art, and it is the way for you to get an idea of your own motivations. As you see, uh, the one thing that we are actually sharing with uh, this American emperor or, or uh, uh, Jari, you know, the guy on the bicycle, the pataphysics guy, um, what we are picking up are viruses, uh, are viruses of disruption and of revolt and of rebellion, of not accepting of the, wor of the rules of the world we are born into and stuff like that. And it happens to be the case that each and every generation has its own little tiny bit of progressive people that need this virus. And the virus, on the other hand, will definitely and always find new bodies. But there's an embarrassing thing and also a beautiful built-in hack in this whole system of, uh, let's say, disruption epidemics, is that you are the holder of the virus only for a short while. Uh, and this is safeguarding you from the trap of, um, let's say, consumer market or of, uh, art system that needs other type of artists, not the type we're discussing in this conference. And I think that's quite sexy. You are either belonging to this, let's say, type of movements or you're flirting with this type of ideas, or you're doing them very sincerely, or, on the other hand, you are doing this uh, whole career industry thing. Uh, it's up to you. Now about so society, <coughs> the social aspect or layer of this whole thing, I'm trying to share with you guys. Um, art is one of the subsystems of society. It's not the most important one, it's not necessarily the sexiest one, although I think it is. Uh, and the trick is that it is, simply put, it is interdependent with other subsystems. It means it, is on, uh, it, 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 has, uh, it, it has its relation with economy or the corporate sector, with government or political sector, with uh, organized religion, if you want to separate it from government for some reason, uh, with labor or any other, let's say, subsystems, media being very important here. This means we shouldn't be surprised that appropriations occur. Because, you see, they happen to be a, a two-way street. We are not complaining when we are doing things such as Billboard Liberation Front, for me, by the way, one of these sexy things I bumped into as a young, impressionable child and still flabbergasted with. Uh, we, we are, we're not complaining when we do that, when we appropriate. We're just complaining when somebody appropriates our shit. And I don't think that's fair. And the trick is, um, 
Okay, if it's for me, I'm not here, please, I, I'm really, uh, I went away. All right. But the trick is that if you do not accept this fact that you are sharing the globe with other subsystems, uh, you are basically, uh, again, either a jockey of your career inside the art system, or you, or in a general, more, more serious sense, you're simply uh, a, a, uh, creating a ghetto around your practice, which is lethal. There's two things I have a tendency to do as a senior citizen in reaction to this problem of existing in a contemporary world. It's not an easy problem to crack. One thing I like to call identity hopping. You might recognize Hedy Lamar, this uh, uh, woman. She died. She was quite great, a great actress. If you remember the movie from the 50s, Samson and Delilah, she, did, she was a hairdresser. At the same time, being like gorgeous and you know, Hollywood beauty, she was also a very smart chick. And she happened to have invented, along with some composer friend of hers, uh, an idea back in 1942, <coughs> patented really, uh, an idea that uh, later gave us this spread spectrum uh, cryptography. Uh, they understood that, you know, American Navy's radio communication with the torpedo was only using one frequency, and then that made this communication vulnerable if, a, if the, you know, the Huns or the, or the Japs would read that, you know. So why not choose a number of frequencies and, and jump really very fast between them, and in this way communicate with your torpedo, because this is how actresses think about the world. Uh, uh, and in, in this way, uh, diminish uh, the chance for the adversary to, you know, you turn your torpedo back, back to your, you know, you uh, That's why it's called you turn. Uh, and um, so I, I was trying to think of this. Uh, you see, when, when we are talking of uh, what Dimitri was, was mentioning earlier, we are all now very uh, uh, worried and uh, worried sick about, about how the world has gone bad and how uh, this uh, whole space of freedom, which was internet, has turned into a, a controlled area and a surveillance apparatus. And what are we going to do? Uh, I believe that um, since we all know all about our you know, digital shadows and, and traces that we leave everywhere, how about using something like this? How about sending out a number of different, let's say, profiles while you're using the web, while you're using the, your any other aspect of digital sphere? How about um, with every search you make, with every query you make, you also send out like 70, 100 other <coughs> queries? Uh, that the sniffers cannot quite recognize and recon reconcile with your profile. Uh, I think that would be an interesting thing. In, out, outside the digital realm, I'm trying to use this identity hopping uh, in my, my you know, physical existence, and this is why I have several careers, and whoever thinks they know me, uh, they know me only from one, maximum two of the careers I run. Uh, it's very hard to follow, and I think that's my, uh, my forte, fluid identity. Okay. And the second little tactic that I use is something that I like to call individual lobbyist anarchism. You might recall individual, individualist anarchists from the 1870s and 80s. Uh, the English case is like fucking amazing. There's this guy who um, blew up uh, not far from the Greenwich uh, Observatory. Uh, you might remember from elementary school that there's such a thing as meridians, you know, these little lines around the globe. It's just a simple convention from 1850s. Uh, and uh, this guy, only, what, uh, uh, 30, 40 years after, apparently decided to blow up the, medi uh, the, the zero meridian uh, as a symbolic gesture of disagreement with the idea of globalization. Or at least that's my interpretation of that. Uh, well, these are individual anarchists. But you see, there's a the problem of you know blowing up the pieces uh, in, a, in a bad place. Uh, so what I'm, what I'm driving at is uh, the Something specific. Since we're in Slovenia, I thought I would add a little spice from here. This pure place being not only a young democracy, as somebody was describing yesterday, um, uh, it's also a tiny democracy, uh, a very tiny one. It is really easy in a society this size to uh, sooner or later end up collaborating with, with everybody alive. Uh, you end up working with anarchists at the squad and with the president of the country inside the same day on the same project but on the opposite end. Uh, I did that, I remember. And it's kind of cute. Uh, and then I understood that uh, it allows me for a tactics that I have no problem mentioning and explaining, uh, and which is this one. Uh, 
I, I work on political projects with political parties uh, or government in general, uh, or I work with corporate uh, sector as a consultant, as a lobbyist, oh, big work. But what I do there is the same thing as this guy from, from London, from Greenwich Observatory. Whenever I can, I smuggle my value. And I make these people do things that they would never dream of doing, and I actually make them happy. Uh, and uh, the one trick here also is to try and make them do things that they cannot repair, as they would like to call it. They cannot undo. Uh, there's trivial stuff uh, from, from you know, making a country's president use the blogging platform. That's not such a great, humongous deal. To uh, making you know, food industries, Podravka, anyone, it's something big in some other country. Uh, do a massive, massive online platform where people actually started caring for each other. That was, uh, that was a bizarre thing to propose. It, it that doesn't bring any money to anyone. But it was feasible just by the sheer silly, stupid fact that we live in a small place and it is possible to be in the room where the decisions are made about stuff. And there, the trick is in having the same type of courage, guts, that, uh, that took uh, John and his friends in the 70s to climb the uh, Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, it takes the same type of uh, ambition uh, as with uh, Dimitri and the Baruch's uh, projects with uh, uh, Telecommunism, only you do it in the real world, in a, in a neighboring uh, subsystem. And I like, that they, I like to believe that this is a, 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 some sort of disruption, but let's say a positive one, not intended to, to uh, make those people think too much because uh, they're equally stupid like the artists. Uh, they do not have any special skills. Okay, uh, this was, I believe, my last thing to say. And after that, uh, as I promised, it's short. Um, I wanted to make this bridge to tell everybody that we're going to talk about a completely different world now, a different parallel system. I'm gonna move this microphone, or actually make you use yours. And that's it for me.